Hello everyone, welcome to episode 29 of Data Programming 1. Hope all of you are staying safe and staying healthy. Uh, sorry for the delay getting this lecture out to you guys. I ran into some unforeseen technical difficulties with my microphone. I'm currently using the microphone that came with the old Xbox game Rock Band. So if you've noticed a decrease in quality, I apologize for that. Um, I was never really a rock band kind of fan back in the day. Huge Guitar Hero fan. All right, so uh, today we're going to be beginning to look at uh, Pandas. It's uh, Pandas is a really great Python module for working with tabular data or tables. Um, I just want to like give you guys a little like brief picture of how this fits into the course. Okay, so we're up here. The beginning of our course, the first five weeks, is about control flow. And then the second five weeks, we were talking about state. So this was like um, uh, how to represent data, particularly lists and dictionaries. You're going to see the fundamentals and data structures in any computer science course you take. Every single one of them is going to cover this. And if you guys master these ideas, then taking a second uh, programming course is going to be much easier. Um, every, every course covers uh, these kinds of things. Um, what's different about our course, data programming, is that this third section, the last five weeks of the course, are going to be focused on data science. Uh, we already started with files and directories. Uh, here we are today with pandas. Um, this is the link as it looks right now while I'm recording. If you're watching this episode, there will already be another thing here that says Kultura and YouTube. And there's also going to be another link that says code that's got all of the code that I've developed today. Also check out this link right here and this link right here. This is the reading for today. Um, it's actually been prepared in Jupyter Notebook by Tyler. We're very grateful for the work he did. If you guys think I do a great job, it's all because of him. Anyway, he's prepared a Jupyter Notebook, both in HTML form, so you can do the reading here. And you can also see the code that he used to develop that. So that way you can open this up and you can change the examples as you go through the reading. So what we're going to see over the next couple weeks is that all of these topics are more independent. Thus far, everything is sort of built uh, Every lecture builds upon the ones that come before it, and it's beginning more and more difficult. What we're going to find is these next series of topics are all independent, and if you struggle with one, the next one might come easily. Uh, they're not dependent on each other. In particular, we're going to be focusing on pandas. This is the how to work with tables. We're going to be looking at the web. We're going to look at databases, and finally we'll wrap up with some plotting. All right, let me just pop back over to my cute picture. Uh, to give the introduction. So Pandas, as I've already mentioned, is a Python module for working with tables, tabular data. It stands for panel data, but let's face it, Pandas is just a cute, easy to remember name, and I think that's why they went with it. All right, so what we're gonna find is that um, there are two main data structures within Pandas that we'll take advantage of a lot. Today, we're gonna be talking about the series, which is much like a combination of a dictionary and a list. And then on Monday, we'll be talking about the data frame. This is the actual table version within Pandas. So the main data structure in Pandas is this series. It's a hybrid of a dictionary and a list. So uh, to be honest, the people who design Pandas probably use the worst possible vocabulary to describe things in this data structure. Um, because it's a combination of a dictionary and a list, we would expect it to have keys and indexes. And in fact, it does. So it's a lot like a dictionary where we have, can access the entries using a specific key, um, but they're gonna call that an index. And it's a lot like a list in that those dictionary entries are all in a certain order, and I can access them with an index, which they're gonna call an integer position. So they're in a specific order, just like a list, um, which means that I can access all of the data with two different ways. I can either use the key or the index, or in Pandas language, I can use the index or the positional integer, integer position. Yeah, integer position. I'm actually gonna just force myself to use the pandas vocabulary, even though I don't think it's pop, uh, the greatest choice of words, because so many people use pandas. It's very popular, very popular. And if you need to reach out to the internet to get help or you look up some things on Stack Overflow or any other website, uh, they will be using the same vocabulary. And so it's good to get used to the bad vocabulary so that you can communicate with other people and ask questions in a way that's meaningful to other people who can help you. Okay, I'm going to jump back over into a Jupyter Notebook, and I'm going to do the rest of the lecture right here in this format. Let me make this big enough so everyone can see it. And then, just for to remind us, all the way through the lecture, in Python, 
we're going to have a key for dictionary entry and an index in a list. Okay. In pandas, the key is actually going to be called the index. And what we would think of as an index in a list, we're going to call this the integer position. All right, this is just I'm gonna, for my memory, for you guys, I just want to have a note there. Okay, so then as we go through, uh, first to actually get access to pandas, we're going to need to install it. So from the terminal, not in Jupyter Notebook, but in from your terminal. Uh, this was one of the things in the instructions from the very first lecture when you first installed Python was to install uh, pandas using pip install. Uh, if you've switched to a new computer, it may not be on there if you haven't reinstalled every all of those packages from the very beginning. So just go ahead and pull this up, and if none of these things work, uh, go back and try this first. Um, and let me just make a note here in the terminal or PowerShell. Because we'll need to do that before we can do any of these other, other things. Let me get some more cells here. Okay, so the very first thing... case. We're going to import pandas. We'll run that one. And now all of the features from the pandas module are available to me. Oops. Right there. And the one we're going to be talking about today is the pandas series. So this is that combination of a list and a dictionary. So it looks like it's working. And um, we're going to be using a lot of features from this module over and over. I'm going to be, in fact, be typing uh, pandas.series over and over and over. Uh, so it's really, really common for people to abbreviate pandas. So if I want to do that, what I'm going to type is import pandas as pd. And in fact, pandas is so popular and this abbreviation is so common that if you go to the internet and look for help, a lot of times you'll just see pd.series. And they won't even show the code where they've done the import. So once I've done this, pd is now an abbreviation for pandas. And I can call pd.series. And if I didn't make any typos, I'll get this. Yeah, I get the very same thing. Pandas course series series. All right. So let's go ahead and start off by creating a pandas series from a dictionary. So I'm going to start with the dictionary. D is equal to, I've got my dictionary. One, one, one will be the key. Seven will be the value. And then we'll have another entry to, whoops, colon eight. And then uh, three. And make that nine. Okay, so there I've got a dictionary, and let me just make sure I didn't screw anything up. Take a look at it. All right, looking pretty good. So from here, I'm going to create pandas series. We're going to use parentheses. This is a constructor, and I'm just going to put in that same dictionary. And and do that. And now we'll just call this, I'm going to give this a label, uh, a variable, put it in S, we'll run S. We can see, there it is. I just want to uh, point out a couple of differences first. Um, please notice that in the Python dictionary, everything is laid out in, in one row. And in Pandas, everything is displayed in a column, where I've got the keys here on the left, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, but they're not keys in Pandas, let me get the language right. I have an index, 1, 2, and 3, and my value, 7, 8, and 9, in the next column over here. Um, so pandas draws things vertically. The dictionary keys are laid out horizontally uh, next to the values. Um, in addition, pandas is also going to give me this inter in integer position, which they don't really display here. Um, what it, we're really looking at is actually more of a three-level table where I've got position 0, position 1, position 2, and this d-type stuff. So this is going to be my let me add another header right here. My integer position. Move these over. And then this will be um, my index. If I can spell. Index in pandas language. And then this is the value over here. Okay. And I can access this data a number of different ways with either the integer position or the index. And before I, I go on, I should probably talk about this last piece of the series. So it's telling me, dtype stands for data type, and it's telling me that these values here, the numbers, are represented as 64-bit integers. So Python's really cool. It lets us use numbers of any size whatsoever. There's no limit on how big an integer we can use. 
but a lot of other programming language, languages uh, put maximum sizes on the how big the numbers can get. They've got to represent them with ones and zeros in computer memory. And so on a 64-bit computer, it's very common to use 64-bit integers. Um, and that gives us a value of about 2 billion as sort of the upper limit. Um, and a lot of what goes on behind the scenes in pandas is that it's actually using libraries lit written in other languages for performance reasons, C in particular. And so this is uh, telling us that they are representing these integer values, 7, 8, and 9, using 64-bit integers when they're doing the uh, processing using C. Um, and uh, Python is great. It's very flexible, very easy to write code. It's a great language to get started and prototype things. But if you want performance, uh, there are better choices out there. And that's why they went with C for some of these things that require uh, high performance. Okay, cool. So next up, I want to talk a little bit about data access. So in a dictionary, I have my dictionary right here. If I wanted to get one of the values out, I would just, whoops, if I want to get one of the values out, like the first entry, I would just type um, D with the key, D1. In uh, pandas, we're going to do something very similar, we, but we've got choices because I now have the integer position and the index. So I can take the series and I can use the function lock location loc and i can give it that same index index and pandas key in dictionaries and that's going to pull out the data let me grab another one there we're good um and the second way that i can access things is using the integer position so to do that i'm going to use iloc and now I can give it a number. Uh, in this case, 0, 1, or 2 would all be valid. So if I just get value 0 and run this cell, uh, I've grabbed 7. I lock of 1 gives me the next one down. I can also do uh, same thing I can in Python with the negative integer. So this should be the last entry, which is uh, 9 in this case, value 9. Um, be a little careful when using these integers, the negative integers, they really only work with iLock. Okay, one of the other things I can do with the series is actually just use the brackets for access and leave out the LOC or the ILC. Um, for example, uh, if I put in one and grab it, Pandas actually knows what to do. It grabs the seven. If I do S of zero, that's a positional index. And I run that, Pandas also knows what to do. Uh, in truth, what it does is it looks through all of the indexes, like dictionary keys, and check those first, and sees if the uh, whatever I'm looking for in these brackets, in this case one, is present. If it's not there, then it starts looking through all the positional indexes to see if any of those match, and then it returns that second. So it's pretty smart. It tries to figure it out. Um, doesn't always work real well if there's any ambiguity. We'll see some of that coming up in a little bit. Um, Oh, another cool thing we can do uh, is we can, uh, you know how when, uh, when we had uh, lists in Python, we could use slicing, but that's required us to grab a contiguous block of indexes. You know, I could get index 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but I couldn't grab index 2 and 6. Well, in pandas, if I have a series, I'm using the brackets to access, let me spread those out, I can use a list on the inside of those brackets to grab, say, position 0 and position 2. When I run this, it's now grabbing the entry at position 0 and position 2. So uh, here it is, 0 and 2, where the uh, index is 1 and 3, values 7 and 9. Um, that's exactly what we got right here. Uh, another cool thing I'm going to access with brackets again. I'm going to put a list on the inside of my brackets. I can grab index 1 and index 3 using those index values. And as long as I put them a list, they're going to work just fine. All right. All right, guys, I paused the recording there for a second. I went back and added a bunch of headings. So if you're following along at home, if you've downloaded this, I went back and put in things like series access with the list of interpositions. Just so as you're going through, you'll know exactly which cell is talking about which topic. Um, and when you actually watch the video, this ho hopefully this Jupyter Notebook will be ready, available for you to download uh, under the code section. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is creating a series from a list. So if I have a, 
a list of numbers and he will make a list square brackets there we go 100 200 300 I can make a panda series from that so PD series I need parentheses to the constructor I'm gonna put in the list 100 200 300 and there it is I'm gonna assign this to a variable just like that and then print out the variable like that and of course I don't actually need to do this 100 200 300 like this I can use a variable that contains a list just like this I get the same result in a little bit I'm gonna be copying and pasting this line or maybe I'll grab a different one and I only want to have to copy one line so I'm gonna just keep it like this for now <clears throat> so um, just a real quick thought I just want to go through this again so in pandas I have my key or index so it'd be a, a key in a dictionary it's an index in pandas I'm gonna to continue to mess that up I'm gonna correct it every single time though so this is gonna be and then I'll have also an integer position let me put some headers up here I have an integer position I have an index and I have a value in this case when I make um, a panda series from a list it chooses the index uh, of those uh, where the values are stored um, to use as the index in the panda series they're also granted an interposition based on where they are on the list and it just turns out that the inter integer position and the index are exactly the same now when I make a list like this so that means uh, let me grab another cell that one doesn't have any code so I can't run it that if I were to say grab access for example value one uh, and run this using the index I get 200 if I use the positional index integer position I also get 200 and for the folks at home following along let's make it so both of these will appear in this in the output all right there we go so they're both accessing the very same thing now something weird can happen when we come to slicing so just a quick review if I wanted to let me let me actually get a longer list so we can slice it and still have some meaningful pieces so we'll make a new series it's a constructor I need uh, parentheses I'm making a list so I need parentheses uh, square brackets and then I'm gonna put a list of letters here uh, that many looks good so we'll go with a B, C, D, F. Good enough. Okay. Let's take a look, make sure that looks good. Perfect. Okay. So again, we've got the index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the values A, B, C, D, E, etc. And these will also have integer positions that currently are the same as the indexes. So I'm going to do one more thing. make letters list just to remind ourselves how this works so letters list is going to be equal to this series also oh, I'm sorry this list so if I were to print that out let's do this down here letters list there we go oh, I never ran this did I there we go there we go okay uh, please note that it's going to print the list horizontally um, and if I were to slice this let's suppose I want to just grab everything after the letter C I can do that with uh, my access brackets I'm on let's see X element 0 1 we'll start with element 2 go to the end and now I've got C D E F now if I were to assign that to a variable I'm going to call that uh, sliced letters as a list is that run that now element 0 from that list is going to be the C it's the first one in the list okay let's try the same thing again with this panda series uh, which is called letters just to remind ourselves 
letters is this. So now if I were to slice this, and I can do that with the same command. Let's see, that was from element two on. I now get this series. So it's created a new series for us um, with uh, indexes two, three, four, and five. And there are the elements, uh, C, D, E, F. So if I were to try and access some of these, so let me stick this in a variable. Sliced letters. We'll run that, you can still see it's printed. Okay, excellent. So if I were to try and grab sliced letters of zero, um, I'm sorry, let's go with two. Let's do it, though, I'll, I'll be very, very clear. Um, we use location two. That's gonna go ahead and get the C because this is still at index two. But check it out, when I was doing the same thing with the sliced list, index zero was the C. Here, index two is the C. So what it's done is it's retained these indices, um, which would have been like, at, parallels to keys in a dictionary, it's retained all of those, it's kept them here. But the positional um, indices, uh, integer positions, uh, have gotten renumbers just like they would in a list. So, slice letters, integer position of zero is now gonna be the letter C. So that will be the first one here. So this can be a little difficult to keep track of, and my advice for keeping track of this is to always use the LOC and ILOC if you were to just go ahead and say slice letters of zero, um, who knows what you're going to get. In this case, uh, key error. It's not actually present. It's not two, three, four, five, or six. Um, if I were to go slice letters of two, then I get C. Um, so you got to be a little bit careful. If you want to use this, uh, definitely put in the I LOC. So what we've actually created is going to look something a little more like this. So in this case, I've got integer position 0, 1, 2, and 3. These will be integer positions. I've got indices. I'm going to just call it index. And then we'll have values. Okay, so my index was actually based on the original uh, index from the list, 0 through 5 in this case. And when I sliced off the first two, the integer position got renumbered, but those indices were retained. All right, another cool thing that um, Pandas lets us do with their series, if I go back up, I'm going to grab this list right here, bring it down for my example. So just to remind everybody, this was the list with uh, index 1, 2, and 3 as text and the numbers 7, 8, and 9 as values. We can slice this with um, keys, actually. I'm sorry, with index. So I can take everything from 2 to the end, and that should give me 2 and 3. All right, guys, I just went back and I added some notes uh, for the people who are skipping lecture today and you just need to look at the notes. Um, so I wrapped up that first section where we're talking about access elements in the uh, in a series. The next thing I want to talk about is element-wise operations. So for example, um, if we have a, a list of numbers, so I'm going to make a list, I'll just put some numbers in it. If I were to do nums times four, let's make it three so it fits. Um, what this is going to do is it's actually going to create a new list where I've got one, two, three, four, and then another copy, one, two, three, four, and another copy, one, two, three, four. We're concatenating three copies of this list nums together. Um, series are going to work a little differently. And in fact, um, if you're a fan of vector math, uh, it's going to be just like you would see multiplying a, a vector by a scalar in this case. Or if you really want to do something to the same, to, to all of the elements in a list, in Python, we'd have to use a for loop to go through and access all the elements and you know multiply them by three or whatever. If we were to use a panda series, so I have a series of numbers, panda series, and this time I'm just going to create it directly from nums. Um, let's just check out what that looks like. 
there it is, a series of numbers, one, two, three, four. So in this case, if I were to take snum times three, instead of uh, make, you know, duplicating the list twice and then uh, concatenating them, this is actually going to perform a lot like we would expect for vector. So it's taken the one here, multiplied by three, and I get three. The second element is two. Uh, I multiply that by three, and I get a new value, six. Uh, three times three is nine, and so on. So this is really cool. I love this feature. Uh, works the same way in MATLAB. Uh, we can do this not just with uh, let me uh, not just with multiplication, but we can do this with addition. There we go. I just added three. So my numbers was one. I added three to it, and I get four. The second element was two. I add three to it, I get five. Uh, same deal with division. with division. There we go, no typos. Uh, so 1 divided by 3 is going to be 3. 2 divided by 3 is going to give me... Wait a second. 1 divided by 3 is 0.333. 2 divided by 3 is 0.66, and so on. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Um, if I were to try and do some of these things with the list... So remember that nums was my list. There it is. If I take nums plus 4, uh, that doesn't mean anything. It actually gives me a type error, so that I can only concatenate um, list to a list. Uh, so I would have to do like something like that. That would work. Um, but that plus operation is not supported for scalar values. Um, neither is uh, something like division. That's always going to give me a type error. So those aren't going to work for us. Let me just make a quick note. Doesn't work with lists. All right. So very good. Um, let's see, what else works? Oh yeah, something else I can do. Just a quick reminder, s num is uh, right there. One of the other things I can do is uh, plus equals. And I can give like everything plus two. So there, I've just performed the operation. And now I forgot to print it out. Actually, let me do this in the next cell down so we can see the change. I've already run that line once. I'll we'll print it out, and now I've added uh, an extra 2. So 1 plus 2 is 3. Um, 2 plus 4 is 5. And it's reassigned it. So in fact, if I run this line again, let me do... We'll print it out right here also. So remember, snum now is this list right here. 3, 4, 5, 6. And now I add 2 more. It's 5, 6, 7, 8. Now if I add two more, the series changes again to 7, 8, 9, 10. So the more times I keep running the cell, it's reassigning it every single time. All right, so next up. So that was scalar operations with the series. Let me just make a note right here. Number one, we had a series um, plus a scalar. And this isn't just plus. We also saw it worked with division, it worked with plus equals. So I'm just going to call this some operation. We've seen that. This also is going to work to with um, other series. So I can combine series with other series. And so I'm going to demo that part real quick. So let's do, let's create a series. Well, let's grab um, a list with one, two, three in it. And then let's choose an operation. How about addition? And we'll create a second series from a list um, with values 4, 5, 6 in it. And when we run this, so I've taken the 1. It's going to element-wise add 4 to it, and I get 5. The second element is 2. The second element here is 5. So 2 plus 5 is 7. And same deal with the last one. 3 plus 6 is 9. And it creates a new series for us with those values in it. Okay, this um, also is going to work with uh, multiplication. So 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 6 is 18. Um, let's see, division. Uh, in this case, it needed to turn those elements into floating point values. So we see the decimal version there. And we've seen it's gone from... Uh, int 64 is the type to float 64 so different data representation uh, finally um let's throw this one in there too we can use exponentiation so one raised to the fourth power is four 
two raised to the fifth power is 32. I'm uh, pretty sure that one, three times raised to the sixth power. I'd have to use a calculator to verify that, but I trust it. Uh, 729 sounds reasonable. Okay, some of the other things we can do. Uh, relational operations. So in this case, let's try so 1, 2, 3 less than 4, 5, and 6. So the first thing it's going to do is say, is 1 less than 4? That's true. So it's going to give me a true there. Is 2 less than 5? Yeah, that's true too. So second element is true. So we've taken these numerical values and we're creating a new series with Boolean values in it. Let me just make one of these so that they'll turn out false. Try that again. Yeah, so 3 is not less than 1. So that third value there, in, uh, index 2, is going to be false. All right. I think you can imagine that it'd be very easy for the writers of pandas to say, well, what if the lists aren't the same length? Let's just, should this be an error? So what if I try and add these two together? In this case, what I end up with is, uh, they decided to go ahead and let this be allowed. But what they've done is, so in this case, one plus four is five. That one's perfectly fine. Two plus five is a seven, perfectly fine. Three plus, well, essentially what we've got over here is a none. Three plus none is really undefined. So what they've decided to do is let that be equal to uh, NAN. NAN stands for not a number. So this is an impossibility in math. Um, it's just given this symbol in uh, computer science. Um, one of the other things to note here is that it switched all of these values. So back when I had the, uh, the six there, and I ran this, these were integers, five, no point zero. I got a seven, there's not a point zero, nine, no point zero. When I did this, it switched all the values to float 64 from int 64. And the reason for that is um, there's not actually a NAN in the integer uh, data type. So that's only available in float 64. So they converted um, all of the numbers to float 64. And this is something that Pandas is gonna do on the inside internally, just naturally, is try and keep everything in the very same type um, for performance reasons. So if it needs a NAN anywhere, it's going to turn all the integers into NANs, oh, I'm sorry, into float values to keep them the same. Uh, there's nothing that says I can't have a series that's composed of lots of different data types. I can put different things in a list. I can put in uh, a character, I can put in a string that's a whole name. I can put in an integer. I can put in a floating point value. I can even add another list or a dictionary where I have a key and a value. So if I do this, it's still going to give me a panda series with all these different things in it. But now because I've mixed everything together, the type is just going to be object. Object is a generic type that just holds anything it wants and uh, is used when we have a mixture of things. Okay, next up. If I want to take two different series and turn them into one big series, for example, up here, this is probably a good example. I've got these two series. Um, and what I, I'm going to just say that this is series one, is that. And series two is this. And then if I want to turn them, just be careful. If you guys bring me homework that doesn't work and I'm taking a look at it, first thing I'm going to ask you to do is print out everything. So I'm going to do that for you just to make sure that I've actually got the series that I want. One, two, three, and four, five. That's looking good to me. So the command now to concatenate two series together is just concat. So just short for concatenation. This is a function, so I need the parentheses. And it takes a list of series that I want to concatenate. So I need to create a list, and I'm going to put in those two series in the list. If everything goes well, it's going to merge them all together into one big series. And when it does this, check this out. I've got my index values for the first series, S1, 0, 1, 2. And then I'm repeating those same index pieces, 0 and 1. So when it's creating the new series, here, let me just stick this in a variable, S is equal to that. And I go through and I try and access 
Uh, for example, if I want s at location, uh, let's go zero. Um, I've got more than one choice. It's ambiguous. I could either be getting this one, or I could get a four, or I could get both of them. And what Pandas has decided to do is go with the both of them. It's going to return everything that has that key, uh, that index. Oh man, I almost said key there. Um, so in a dictionary, we can't have more than one thing with the same index. In a Pandas series, it's no problem because we also have that positional uh, um, information. All right, um, I actually think this is an advantage, but it's important to know how it works. We'll see that if we want to extract a lot of data, like from our movie data set, if we had a bunch of data that all had a similar genre and I wanted to pull out all of the movies that were comedy, I could use my S location with comedy and grab all of those um, pieces with one command like that. We actually wrote a function for the homework to do that. Um, it's kind of a lot of work. Here it could be done in exactly one line. Okay. Um, so one of the other confusing things that we'll run into, let me see, element-wise ambiguity. Hopefully I spelled that right. So if I have two series, um, S1, in this case I'm going to make this a little confusing just to be demonstrative. I'm going to create a series and I want it to be a dictionary in this case. So I'm going to have the letter A corresponds to, let's go with 10, and B corresponds to 20. And now I'm going to create another series, S2, with the exact same keys. But I'm going to switch them. So B will be the first one, A will be the second one. And let's change the values here of the 1 and 2, just so they're different numbers. Next up, um, I think I already have two lines that print out an S1 and an S2. I'll grab those, use them again. So there we go. So now A is 10, B is 20, and in series two, my keys are, I'm sorry, my, yeah, my keys from the dictionaries that I made them are in a different order. That order is preserved. And so in the series, the index B corresponds to one and uh, index A corresponds to two. So then what happens if I do S1 plus s2. Uh, we've got two choices. The authors of pandas, they could say, well, this is the first thing in my series. That's the first thing in my series. I should take the 10 plus 1 and make 11. Or I could go back and say, well, this is element a. So this is the 10. And the a here is a 2. So I should add 10 plus 2 and get 12. So when we do this, they've actually decided to go with the element-wise um, alignment. So they'll take the or, I'm sorry, it's called index alignment. I mean, let me write that down right here. Index alignment. So in this case, I'm going to take key A and make it correspond to whatever is in, um, I'm sorry, index A and index A here. Those are the ones that are going to match up. So uh, you'll find throughout Pandas that they prioritize using the, um, the index over the position, but the position is still available to us. And finally, in this section, uh, last thing I want to do is be able to insert or append new data into an existing series. So in this case, let's take a look at S2. Uh, quick reminder, that was just this um, B and A with 1 and 2. If I want to insert new data, I can just add a new index and give it a value. So we'll just stick in element Z, and then we'll print out S2. Again, there it is. So it's the same list, or the same series, B1, A2, and now I've added another element, just sticks it on the end. Uh, we'll talk about some of the other things, how to rearrange these, how to sort them in the lab. So I'm going to not do that in this lecture um, as I try and get through the next couple of topics. Let me pause for a second, go grab a drink, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Got a glass of water. Uh, it's been three weeks since I've left the house with the uh, quarantine and the global pandemic. I ran out of Mountain Dew a long time ago. I drank my very last Coke today. I've got some lemonade, but that's just not the same. All right, I'm sorry, got distracted. Uh, so next up, Boolean operations. So one of the really cool things that we can do, and this is really very powerful. Um, let me create a quick series here and demonstrate this. Series, let's see, we'll put a list in, we'll give it some values, 10, 2, 3, 15, 
There we go. Suppose I wanted to ex Whoa, where'd that comma come from? All right, there we go. Let me print that out, just make sure it's looking good. Yep, all right, looks good. So suppose I wanted to extract the 10 and the 15, or every number greater than eight. So one of the ways I can do that is actually using, I'm going to be accessing the list. Um, but what I'm going to use for my access now is another panda series. And that series is going to have Boolean values in it. So I'm using Boolean series to access this series. So if I want the 10, I'm going to, I'm going to put in true. I don't want the two, it's too small false, false, and true. So if I were to do this, now I'm gonna pull out only this 10 row, because that one's true. I'm skipping the next two, and then the fourth one, also true. So I've grabbed the 10 and the 15 doing something like this. Okay, that would be a lot of work to do manually every single time. Um, here, let me just quick uh, speed this up a little bit. I can create a Boolean series using uh, just this notation right here. Don't print that out. This is what the Boolean series that I'm inserting into this uh, expression is. Now I can say S of B, and that gives me the 10 and the 15 also. So I've just uh, saved this part of it, this Boolean series, as a variable B. Now, one of the things that's really great about pandas is I can create Boolean series using um, relational operators. So I can take my series, quick reminder, it's 10, 2, 3, and 15. And if I say s greater than 8, that's going to give me a scalar comparison. So it's going to take the 10 and say, is 10 greater than 8? Yes, it is. True. Is 2 greater than 8? No. False. And it goes through and creates a brand new Boolean series for um, this... Uh, the question I'm asking it is s greater than 8 and it does it element wise so it goes through and once I do that uh, there's no reason I can't store this in a variable so I can say this b is equal to this and now uh, Jupyter doesn't print it out unless I do that um, I go right back ahead and use this to extract the values that are greater than 8 and in fact I can do something that actually looks a little bit strange when I write it I can put my conditional statement, my relational operation, s greater than 8, right here in the middle. Remember, this is going to create that Boolean series, and I can use a Boolean series inside these square brackets to access just certain elements. So when I do that, it's giving me the same thing back. So this crazy syntax is extremely powerful for selecting things from a list. So, um, let's see, another example. Let's... Uh, I'm going to combine two examples in one here. We're going to talk about string operations as well as extracting uh, uppercase words from a list. We'll go with that. So let's take a list of words where some of them are uppercase. So I'm making a list. I'm making a series from a list. And we'll put in four words. Let's go with um, apple bill, cat, and dog. All right, so apple and cat are both capitalized. Uh, bill and dog are lowercase. So if I want to extract the capitalized words, I'm um, going to need to do some comparison. So uh, let me just make sure this worked. So let's print out words. OK, good, looking good. Syntax is all right. So one of the things I can't do, I can't just call upper to turn all of these things into uppercase. Uh, this is going to fail. It's going to give me an attribute error. And that's because upper is a string function. All right. So that means I can't actually call it on a series. But what I can do, and uh, let me put a little note here, error can't call string functions on series. All right. So I'm going to run that. That should be good. What I can do is recognize that it's a string function. That's going to be in stir upper. And this now will be called element-wise on each of the things when I just use this little bit of extra notation. 
So that's now going to produce a series where stir.upper has been called for every one of the strings inside of the series uh, words. So at this point, um, I'm just going to save this in a variable. We'll call it up. So there it is. Up now contains this series. And now to extract the um, uppercase words, I need to do a little more work. I need to know which ones I want to extract. And that means I'm going to be taking words and applying some sort of brackets, some sort of access with a Boolean list, a Boolean series. This is my goal. I want to do this. So I need to create that Boolean series um, with some sort of comparison. And I want to know if the words are uppercase. So to do that, if I've got my original list, Apple is right here. I want to compare it to the uppercase version. If these two are the same, then I want to keep it. I want that to be true. Bill is lowercase. This bill is uppercase. Those two will not be the same. So when I compare them, I want to get false. And I can use that, that true here, the false here, the true here, in a Boolean series to just extract the ones that are already uppercase from words. So to do that, let's take a look at... Um, words exactly equal to uppercase or words equal up so in this case um, it compares the first word in words apple to the first words in upper also apple but and they're the same and I, I get true when i do that comparison so this has created a boolean series for us so um in this case i'm going to save this and print that out make sure it's looking good from here i can just go use that to access the square brackets for access with a boolean series b and now this is going to extract just the words that are uppercase apple and cat uh, all in about three lines worth of work uh, that would have come in really handy during some of our projects um all right one more example one more and numbers all right, I'm going to get all of the odd numbers from a list. So first, let me grab a new series. Series, uh, create that from a list, not a dictionary, a list. And let's go with, we need some numbers, 10, 19, 11, 30, 35. Okay, there we go. Um, if I want to get odd numbers, one of the things I, I would do in the past is I would look at the modulo function. So S mod 2. If I run this, I can see that, so my first number is a 10. When I uh, divide by two and take a look at the remainder, I get a remainder of zero. And 10 is even, so remainder is zero. So it looks like I want to extract all of the numbers from this list where S mod two is equal to one. So let's take a look at that real quick. So S mod two is that series with zero, one, one, zero, one. And I want to know if that's exactly equal to one. Let me run that real quick. So if this is a zero, I want this to say false because I don't want the even numbers, I want the odd ones. So, and that's true. So for the second one, 19, right there, mod two is gonna give me a one. That's exactly equal to one, so I get a true here. Now I can uh, store this in a Boolean series, right there, just like that. And I can use this on, see, did I ever give it a name? Yep, so my list of numbers was S. There it is. Now I can say S, I can use the access, give it the Boolean series B, and pull out only the odd numbers, 19, 11, 35. Is that right? Let me check back. 10 was not, 19, 11, 35. So that looks good to me. All right, next example. What I'd like to do is take a look at some of the Boolean operators like and, or, and not. And um, yeah, here, let me make a little note here. And, and or not and for example let's um do let's get all of the numbers from the list s that are less than 12 or greater than 33 less than 12 then 33 there we go so that from that list it looks like 10 11 and 35 So, quick reminder, there's my list. Um, so it looks like I should be able to do something like uh, s less than 12 or s greater than 33. If 
If I try and run this code, however, I get a value error. And it turns out that or is not one of the um, values that they were able to hijack. So when the writers of pandas, um, Python lets you change the behavior of some of the operators, like plus and divide and uh, pretty much all the ones we've seen so far, less than, greater than. Um, and because they wanted to be able to use them element-wise on their series, they had to change the behavior of the addition operator, the plus operator, the plus equals. But and, or, and not were three things that they were not allowed to change. So what the writers of pandas did was went and just hijacked a different operator. So instead of the keyword or, like we would use in regular Python, they're going to use the vertical bar, also known as a pipe. Um, I'm actually going to make a little note right here. doesn't work with or and or not. So those three are not going to work. And then I'm going to make another cell right here where I'm going to change this to the vertical pipe and make a comment. Use vertical pipe instead of or. All right, we're going to run into another problem real quick. The precedence for the vertical pipe, that means something else in Python. Uh, but the precedence is very, very, very high. So what we've just done here is said, do this part first. Take 12 or S. And not really sure what this means. It's going to give us a value error. Uh, that's not good because the precedence is so high. That means that it's going to do the pipe first instead of the less than and the greater than like we were hoping. So. In the very next cell, to do this the right way, we're going to need to add parentheses around pretty much everything. So I want this to happen first. And then I want this to happen. And then last, I want this OR operator to happen. I don't need to put parentheses around the very last one. And when I do this, finally, I'm able to extract the 10, 11, and 35 that I was looking for. So quick review. What I've done here is I've created a Boolean series using these relational operators and the boolean operator. So I want to know if it's less than 12, this part's just fine. This is going to take the series and decide if it's less than 12 and create a, a boolean series. Then it's going to create a second boolean series for just the ones that are greater than 33. Um, and then finally, it's going to take both of these boolean series and merge them together with the or operator. So it's going to go element wise element by element. So for example, the very first element was 10. It's going to decide that it is true that it's less than 12. So the first element in the first Boolean series from that left relational operator will be true. And it's going to take that 10 and say is 10 greater than 33. So my second Boolean series here will be false. And it's going to take a true or false and merge those together when it creates this composite Boolean series. And that's going to be true. And so when it uses that final Boolean series to access the series S here, uh, 10 is true, 11 will come out true, and 35 will also be true. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, I just needed a quick drink. I want to point out the next two. Uh, I talked about AND and OR. Um, this, they work exactly the same. I'm sorry. I just did OR. I'm talking about AND and NOT. These guys are going to work exactly the same way as OR, uh, with the exception that I've changed the operators. So in this case, AND is going to use the ampersand, that's a shift 7. So a quick example here, in fact, let's just do the same example. If I want to know if it's between 12 and 33, I'm going to switch this to ampersand. Right now, this should give me nothing, an empty series, because I want to know if it's greater than 12 and less than 33. There we go. So that should be the middle numbers, 19 and 30. Uh, same deal, the precedence is very high, so I need parentheses on everything. Um, and then finally, the not operator is the tilde. So let me just do a real quick example of that. So if I want to say not between 12 and 33, again, precedence means that I'm going to need to put more parentheses around all of this. So not greater than 12 and not less than 33. That should be everything we saw in the OR list, the 10, 11, and 35, because it's not 
part of this series. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, I think we'll begin the next lecture, Monday's lecture, with just a quick review of some of this stuff and whatever I feel like I've forgotten when I give it some thought over the weekend. And then most of Monday is going to be composed of talking about the data frame. That's the actual pandas data table and all the cool things we can do there. Let me uh, quick pop back over to here. Quick reminder, um, this HTML um, reading was actually prepared by Tyler. He took the time to write this himself. He did it in a Jupyter notebook so you guys can go through and make it interactive as much as possible. I'm hoping this is the best possible thing we can do for learning at home. Uh, if you guys have any feedback about the anything but the auto, audio quality, I'd love to hear it. My microphone will be back in uh, working order very soon, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, any sort of feedback you can give me other than the rock band microphone is uh, love low quality. I'd love to hear it. Let me know, and um, I will be back on Monday. Have a great weekend.